Hi folks, my name is Adam and I like to make tiny nerdy things. And a couple of days ago I was sitting in my office doing some 2021 doom scrolling when I came across this. And I thought to myself, I want that. Now, first and foremost, I'm going to need a whole bunch of colored clay. Fortunately, I happen to have an entire box of clay sitting here that I ordered specifically to do this very project. Next, I'm going to need a way to roll this clay out to an equal thickness. I tried using a pasta machine, but whenever I cut the clay apart, I ended up with layered sheets detaching and they just kind of fell apart. So to get around that issue, I'm going to use two pieces of MDF that are a quarter inch thick and use that as a guide so that I can roll my sheets by hand. Then all I need to do is cut a straight line down the center of my sheets so that I have a nice flat edge and then I can sandwich that between the MDF and use a blade to cut away any excess. And then I'm left with some pretty square unbaked clay worms that I can lay out on a baking sheet. So all I need to do is repeat this process using all the other colors that I plan to use for my cube made of cubes. Then it's into the oven to cure everything and I'm ready to start breaking my square tubes into tiny cubes. My plan is to have this cube of cubes 16 cubes high and 16 cubes wide. The problem with that is that if any of my cubes are misshapen, then by the time I reach the top of the walls it's going to be super wonky. So I need to devise a way to chop my cubes with some degree of uniformity. Fortunately I have a few friends that work at NASA and they were able to provide me with a next gen cube cutting prototype. Now I know it looks pretty complicated, but bear with me and I'll try to break it down for you. First, a cube tube goes into empty cube tube and then the end lines up with the end of the plastic line. Then using an advanced tungsten reinforced Stanley knife blade, you chop down on the exposed cube tube releasing a perfectly shaped cube into the atmosphere. Finally, the reinforced facial protection wall will catch the cube preventing serious bodily injury to the user. Then you just repeat this process for the next 14 straight hours until you have enough tiny cubes to make a stupid YouTube video. And by the end of it you should have enough small cubes to make a single big cube. Fun fact, the number of cubes you see before you wasn't even enough to finish half the project so I ended up having to make almost three times as many cubes. Otherwise, the final step before we can start assembling everything is to make a few choice stone blocks into some coal, gold, redstone, and a little lapis lazuli. Now I know better than to think that these perfect little cubes are going to be anything even remotely perfect, so I'm going to build a frame that should at least help the bottom and the two sides stay flat and square to one another. I'll mark out the area on the bottom before gluing some walls along the sides to help keep my vertical blocks in place. Finally, I'll add some tape along the bottom so that I can easily remove it when the glue is dried. Then it's just a case of gluing the blocks in place. Now normally this would be a slow and tedious process, but with a couple cups of coffee, a can of Red Bull, and some badass montage music, I find I can work at breakneck paces. I want the interior of the cave to have a few big holes in the wall so that you can easily admire the lush patch 1.17 cave inside. To make it easier to build around the holes and to make sure everything lines up properly, I'll make the top of the cave entrance separately before gluing it in place. I'll do the same thing with the extra large cave entrance and then it's back to the badass montage. So once everything is dried, it's time to take the supporting frame away and see just how wonky it really is. And honestly, it's not that bad. I mean, sure, some of these blocks are about as straight as Elton John drinking a whiskey sour, but all in all, I'm quite pleased with how it all lines up. So once I've freed my cube from its MDF prison, I'm ready to start adding the greenery. As is the usual, I haven't got any plan at all. Really, this should be obvious to you since adding these blocks in before the walls had gone up would have been significantly less finicky, but, you know, planning and all that. So I'm just gonna kind of stick them in place wherever I think helps add to the feng shui of the cave. 
Of course, what's a lush, overgrown cave without some vines and ropes hanging down? So to make my vines, I'll roll out some wormy dealies of green clay and then cut them diagonally to form my leaves before rolling out some brown worms together to make a vine. Then this all goes in the oven to bake before gluing each of the leaves on one by one, turning my braided brown rope into a beautiful, lush cave vine. Then I can set this aside and get started on the water. I've cut a few of my green vines into short strands that I'll glue to the bottom of the cave before applying a thin layer of UV resin with a brush. This should hopefully seal all the cracks and holes and prevent the next layer of resin from pouring out the bottom. Of course I know better than to trust that, so I'll tape the bottom off just to be safe before mixing up my first batch of extra blue resin. Now while my resin's curing, I want to partake in the miracle of life. So when two little blocks of clay really love each other, they mash together to create the miracle of life that is the axolotl pink zygote. Now this zygote undergoes a process called segmentation in which a pair of hands carefully chop sections of it apart to reveal the underlying axolotl body parts. Then much like when there's a bun in the oven, the clay sections get cured in that same proverbial oven before being reattached in a process called use super glue to stick all the body parts together. Finally, a little paint will give the axolotl its coloring as well as an adorable little face and it can be happily birthed into the world, ready to swim amongst its friends and family deep within the Minecraft grotto. And with that finished, I'll add a second layer of resin to bring the water level up to the same height as the second layer of blocks before adding some lily pads and water plants. Then I'm finally ready to add the vines that I made earlier. I also decided that the axolotl were too cute to be left undefended, so I made an appropriately beefy guardian to watch over them. With cave all but finished, I can start adding the top on top. Now trying to build an evenly spaced, well-supported ceiling would be a bit of a faff, so I'm going to make the first few block layers separately before adding them on as a single piece. This will also make it easier for me to add a few hanging vines before adding the rest of the roof into place. Now I decided to leave a big chasm in the center to give a bit of variation to the top as well as make it a little bit more bright when you look down into the cave. I've also added a few more vines to spruce things up before adding some more dirt blocks to the grassy section as well as a couple of trees. Finally I'll add a bit of color variation by painting some brown bark onto the trees and adding some yellows and purples to the grass and some of the vines. To make the tree cubes, I'm going to repurpose my coffee grinder into a clay grinder. This will leave me with some choice nuggets of the dankest green tree clay which I can then square off using the same method that I made the other cubes with. Then once I've got some pretty dope little green tree cubes, I can glue them around the tops of the tree. Now you may remember that I made an entire set of dirt rocks with green on top that were going to act as the layer between the grass and dirt. And if you did, well, good job, cause I sure didn't. 
Once I had removed the dirt blocks and replaced them with the grassy blocks, I wanted to add some little tufts of grass, so I glued some tiny clumps of green worms upright using some globs of super glue. Finally, when I went to make my dinner, I noticed that I had a tray of body parts sitting on the shelf. Not wanting to waste anything, I used the green clay to make a tiny creeper, and then the rest of the clay will be used to make a teeny tiny Steve. Finally, to add a little bit of excitement to the cube and give it that impending sense of doom, I'm gonna glue the creeper creeping up on Steve while he stares wonderingly into the axolotl-filled chasm. But otherwise, we're, uh, onto our glamour shots. There you have it folks, I hope you liked this one, I thought it would be a nice to return to Minecraft but with a slightly less horrifying spin on things. Of course, I wouldn't be able to continue making these tiny nerdy things without the support of my patrons. So a big thank you to my newest patrons, Daniel Hayes, Epic Mouse, Sophia Murphy, Casey Audi, Burley, Daniel E, Coquelaine Lang McElduff, Lady Knight, Shanax, and Angus and Haley. If you'd like to help me make tiny nerdy things, then head on over to my Patreon and see if there isn't something you'd like to help out with. Of course, nothing helps out quite like subscribing, sharing this video with friends and family, hitting that like button, and leaving me a comment. In fact, I thought it might be fun to answer one or two questions each week from comments posted on the last video. So this week's question is from Ethan Gibbs who said, Can you make merch that says wormy dealies and has a wormy dealie on it? Thanks. Yes, Ethan Gibbs. Yes, I can. I plan to make merch in the next few weeks, so with how my planning goes, you can expect to see that on the YouTube page eventually. Otherwise, we'll um, see you next week. Cheers.